Look, I get it. Change is hard, especially when it comes to a wrestler's entrance music. Sometimes we get so used to a certain song that we get totally thrown for a loop when all of a sudden, whammy, it disappears into the upside down. But change can also be a good thing, as evidenced by these superstars who, quite frankly, have changed their tunes for the better. That being said, I'm Kevin Callis from Wrestling Behind the Themes, and please, won't you subscribe and hit that ringy dingy bell? Because here are are 10 wrestlers who successfully changed their entrance theme song. I don't know how to explain this other than saying that Tony Khan must have a gigantic man crush on Orange Cassidy. There's just no other way to explain how TK has generously opened up his checkbook not only once, but twice to purchase popular music licensing rights for the king of sloth style. So after about a year and a half of trying to secure Cassidy's indies entrance theme of Jane by the Jefferson Starship, the band was radio silent. So Khan moved on and acquired the rights to use the Pixies, where is my mind to lead freshly squeezed to the squared circle. The aloof and laid back slacker used this surf rock classic for about a year until the wrath of Khan must have finally gotten through to the starship who then agreed to give OC their classic keyboard infused jam just in time for another wet hot American summer. <laughs> Also, no stranger to theme song changes. Hulk Hogan took a walk on the dark side when he joined Scott Hall and Kevin Nash to form the NWO. Gone was the red and yellow, the prayers, the vitamins, the WCW produced real American ripoff theme song American Made, and everything else associated with his character from the WWF's golden era. For this new persona, Eric Bischoff wanted fans to experience something really unique that wouldn't sound like traditional wrestling entrance music. So he opened up Ted Turner's wallet to the tune of 100 grand and Jimi Hendrix's voodoo child is probably as associated with the Hulkster as it is with the man who created it. Hogan's strut to the ring while playing air guitar on the WCW World Heavyweight Championship belt with Jimmy wailing away on his wah-wah pedal made Hulk a cool bad guy and helped cement the greatest heel turn in pro wrestling history. Do you smell what The Rock is cooking? Ha! The Rock's laying the smack down. From one icon to another, Dwayne Johnson has practically built himself into the CEO of his very own Roman Empire. But it wasn't built in one day. In fact, if you look back at the genesis of the rock in wrestling, well, it's obvious to see now that the generic grinning from ear to ear, happy to be here because family Rocky Maivia thing was never really going to work. Rocky and his out-of-touch entrance music were relics of a bygone era that just didn't pass the smell test with the WWE Universe anymore. But when the Rock was born, out of bitterness towards how the audience rejected his attempt to be the white meat babyface his papa was, well, let's just say that his destiny pretty much changed overnight. With The Rock able to dominate on the microphone, this cocky heel of a character was a catchphrase machine and soon became must-see TV every time this theme song began began to play. The Rock's cousin, Roman Reigns, has truly reached God Mode, son, and his Head of the Table theme song was the final piece in completing his Tribal Chief makeover. Sounding like it's been produced by the inspirational composers of yesteryear, we believe that this stirring and moving masterpiece is perfectly suited for the undisputed WWE Universal Champion, like something you'd hear in a Final Boss video game battle. Reigns said in an interview with Bleacher Report that there's something about this track which he thinks is a key element in making a great entrance tune. It gives you that ultimate swag when you're walking out, he said. This quote is on point with Reigns' lengthy entrances. He's put together on a run that has been virtually flawless. The time was ripe to make the switch away from the big dog's stale shield music, and we acknowledge this greatness on a different level.
Speaking of the Shield, the artist formerly known as Dean Ambrose roared into AEW at Double or Nothing 2019 and truly signaled a paradigm shift in the world of pro wrestling. Seemingly having been driven to the fringe of lunacy by his former employer, Mox got a new lease on life and the upstart promotion made all the more memorable thanks to his initial headbanging theme song by the Violent Idols called Unscripted Violence. However, in the buildup to his exploding barbed wire death match with Kenny Omega, the purveyor of violence began using the tune Wild Thing by the punk band X. Popularized first in the film Major League, this change in themes was meant to be a one-off thing as a tribute to Japanese deathmatch wrestling legend at Sushi Onida, who used this hardcore heater for years. But due to Mox being insanely over, this fan-friendly favorite doesn't appear to be going anywhere anytime soon. While Moxley has proven to be quite the hot commodity in wrestling, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler are only slightly behind the blue-eyed battler for the most popular All Elite Athlete, formerly known as The Revival. These two hard-hitting grapplers were a lock to land in AEW and made their debut just as the COVID-19 pandemic began. Driving what appeared to be a rehabbed Sanford and Son-looking truck and having the Southern Rock tune Old School raised for an entrance theme, Dax and Cash are rooted in the past with a little bit of new school seasoning. However, it wasn't until they changed their tune per the suggestion of Tony Khan to the Midnight Express-esque theme of Dark Side of TR did business really start to pick up. I hear voices in my head, they counsel me, they understand, they talk. All right, raise your hand if you actually remember the alliance between Randy Orton and the Revival, affectionately known as FTRKO, that dissolved out of nowhere after only one month. Ah, what could have been, much like Orton's initial Youngest World Champion theme, Burning My Light by the band Mercy Drive, which is an amazing song in my humble opinion, but a song the Viper vehemently despised. Hey, Randy has had plenty to say through the years, of course, voicing his displeasure whenever the question would come up about this theme and i quote i hated that she's for all four years i hated it from the first day i heard it they even tried to tweak it a bit and i still hated it uh tell us how you really feel dude now knowing that he can be a bit of a prima donna the wwe had the lead singer of the group rev theory rich luzzy travel with orton for a week to get inside his demented head for a lack of a better term and the result was voices a slapper that still goes hard perfectly capturing the essence of Randy Orton and his unpredictable nature. When a man called Sting began to venture away from the colorful persona he portrayed during the late 80s and early 90s into the mysterious and melancholy vigilante who loomed in the shadows for months and months, clearly when he returned, his cheesy slam jam song wasn't going to cut it anymore. One of the few things WCW got right was this ominous operatic entrance theme, rimming with percussion, heavy on symphonic strings, and filled with dread. It fit Sting's mood as he traded in his brightly colored attire to become the Dark Avenger version of himself and one of the most enigmatic characters in all of wrestling. After over a year away from the ring, the Stinger needed something important sounding to accompany him back into the fight against the NWO. And his Crow theme nailed it perfectly. <laughs> You can hate John Cena all you want, but his success and star power make him one of, if not the best, the WWE has ever had. From a musical perspective, Cena grew up a huge fan of hip hop. So after being unable to stand out with his ruthless aggression side, John repackaged himself into the doctor of thugonomics, which led him to spitting hot rhymes on his own theme song known as Word Life or Basic Thugonomics. However, even as he verbally roasted the WWE universe. It was obvious he possessed all the qualities of a main event babyface. And before long, John adopted the meme factory My Time Is Now and morphed into Super Cena, the superhuman force capable of surviving even the deadliest of beatdowns. Since coming out to this entrance theme, John became a 16-time world champion, five-time United States champion, four-time tag team champion, and a two-time Royal Rumble winner. <laughs> 
That's a pretty successful switch, if you ask me. For a certain generation of fans, Edge, as the rated R superstar, is all they know. But the rest of us boomers remember the brooding guy who putzed around with Christian and Gangrel, then eventually just Christian becoming part of a great, but also rather goofy tag team. When Edge finally decided to grow up and steal his best friend's girl, that's when his theme song changed for the better to Alter Bridge's Metalingus. The ultimate opportunist was born, and we all saw pretty clearly exactly who Edge was. I guess we really didn't know him that well after all, did we? 